Hello and welcome back to Fort Triumph and I am really excited because we're now on version 1. The game has officially released on Steam so it's out of early access and yeah I'm, I'm very excited to jump in and see what what it's got to offer so let's run down through the changes before we do. So Act 3 has been added to finish out the story. They've added an extra mission to Act 1. There's more than 50 new artifacts um, and they've improved the existing ones as well. There's support for languages including Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, simplified Chinese and Japanese. They've added support for disabling permadeath, which would allow you to re-recruit um, any character that got kind of KO'd, KO'd back in the town. Then something that I mentioned um, in my playthrough, um, I think they've addressed. When finishing an act, players can choose which heroes to retain. It's also possible to retain one artifact and select starting reward for the next act. So that's good. It kind of it, it makes you feel. I like that. It makes you feel as if you've got real progress going on there. Then they've added um, new music track for the crypt. Uh, world map environment. Cool. And then there's a whole bunch of other improvements that they've made as well in terms of AI balance, visuals, uh, lots of bug fixes. Yeah, so really happy for that. So I want to jump in and start playing. Our previous save files are not compatible. That's fine. So we are going to start a campaign. I like that there's local co-op as well. I think there's, um, yeah, local co-op. Okay, I was going to say, maybe there's online co-op as well. Maybe there is. Right, so my faction is going to be the Human Kingdom. I guess these other ones either get unlocked or maybe they're coming in DLCs. Um, we're going to go for Legendary because why not? I'm not going to play this tutorial because I've played this enough. I'm going to keep permanent on and we're just going to play. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how the game has, has turned out. Like the, the guys have been improving it every every update and they've really listened to feedback as well. It was nightfall and a smoldering soup inn was bustling with activity. The recent economic troubles had folks concerned, which in turn demanded spending coin to take their mind off such things. A hooded character quietly approaches the tavern's entrance, where a large troll loiters menacingly. Greetings! May I have entrance into this establishment? The bouncer eyes the stranger up and down. No can let dubious person in. You want to go through the back? That's for persons of dishonest repute or general unscrupulousness. The hooded stranger tips his hood and skulks away into the darkness. Thanks. And you want to skulk with your knees so it don't hurt your back. The dark figure nods gratefully at the thoughtful comment and skulks away with his knees. Meanwhile, inside the smoldering soup inn, And since the Justice Factory shut down, I cannot find worthy employment. And Leandra here just lost her scholarship. I'm telling you, there ain't no justice. Well, there remains some in the stockpiles, but that shan't last long. Leandra stares forlornly at the wall and sighs. It's frickin' noble's fault, you know. Always plotting and playing with our hard-earned or stolen coin. But is their divine right to do such? As the scripture commands, chapter 7 of ye far too olden ways, the lady of the lake, her arm clad in... Leander stirs from her daydream. Hey, what if we formed our own party? Eh? Why is this coming up now? We need a coin and we're a capable group. could hire ourselves out directly and pick the contracts we like. 
You don't have to take crap from no one. I like it. Yes, we could halt evildoers ere they enact their villainous plots. Suspicious how the character stumbles and bumps into Solar Solaris. Whoops. Apologies. Not to worry, sir. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. We shall require a coat of arms and surely a battle standard. Solaris's voice drowns out as the mysterious stranger makes his way to either side of the inn to a quiet corner quiet corner table where a fearsome goblin warchief awaits. The warchief nods as the figure approaches and takes a seat. The hunted character pulls out a heavy parcel and slides it over. Are we settled? Garbrek inspects the contents, rattles it some and nods. The pact is made. The hooded character begins to laugh maniacally. <laughs> Shh! Garbrek gestures to a sign above the bar. No evil cackling past midnight. Act 1 The Goblin Evasion. Oh, I like this. This is slightly different as well. Three months later. Alright, let's review. I think we can improve on some areas, but we're coming together. I thought, for instance, your speech during the raid was inspiring. Do you believe Annie heard me over the sound of the bandits screaming? Well, timing is something I want to touch on. Also, Evan, don't rob the mayor's mansion next time. But he's got the nicest stuff. Yes, but that was our client, and contracts are easy to come by. But as word of our great deeds spreads, the offers will flow. No, I ain't doing any more of that work for exposure nonsense. Agreed. It's degrading and I have tuition to pay. Next job then. Could check on the job board. Slim pickings and all, but worth a sh shake. The three heroes crowd around the job board. The cheap wood peppered with... Entreaties to kill this many rats or harvest that many herbs. Why look, a position by Lady Aurelin herself. I hear her estate so big, her bloody footmen need butlers. Curse, then those butlers need footmen to order around. Wonder if they get butlers. Leandrum, Leandra's mouth waters. Oh, this contract demands four heroes, and we are but three. Figures. Wait, look at this one. Adventures. Seeking party. This could be our fort, so we could take the other quest. Hard worker, hard puncher, flexible on morality, resume, resume attached. The meeting place is just over the hill. Let us find this fort, join forces, and venture together on Lady Aurelene's lucrative assignment. Okay, so we get to get going now. So we got... Ah, interesting. So they talked about this. So there's kind of higher level gatekeeping to stop... to stop what was happening before where um, it you get to kind of clash against the the enemy um, fort very quickly. So now they'd have to fight their way through that, which they won't be able to do with a simple party. Right, so let's do that and get ourselves two magic. This is going to be four skull difficulty for us, so we need to do some stuff on the way to it instead. That's a three and a half skull. That's a four skull. So we're going to go here, get ourselves a boost. A wise lanky hermit regales you with tales of his exploits. Sitting there, sipping on delicious tea and learning of his adventures, he feels sharper than ever and ready to battle. Plus 10 accuracy for next battle. Thank you for that. Then we'll see what this is. He stopped next to a small potion shop in the form of loose planks in a hovel. A hovel-like structure, shifty-eyed and overactive, potion brewer emerges from within. You're just in time, he says. These are the last I've got. He laughs disturbingly. 
Okay, so we get a demeanor potion, accuracy potion. Let's just grab a health potion because they're kind of nice to have at the start of the game. Then, oh, I like how this has changed. Um, it looks a bit better. Although, I suppose it's, I got kind of two feelings about it. It's nice that it kind of, that indicates to me that the maximum party size, or number of parties, should I say, is three. Um, but it would be nice, maybe, at the same time for it to grow as parties are added. But it's a good way of indicating very quickly that you can have up to, you can have up to three parties. So we're going to give this to, I think, to you, because you've got the lowest health at the moment. Then the skill three, uh, skill tree has been changed as well. Have to see how how that works out. Uh, we can customize the guys as well, though. So um, let's see, white, and then. Let's go red there. Primary color then. Not red or yellow. Green? Okay. No, not green actually. That may be light blue. Yeah. Okay, and then Leandra. Let's change her a bit. Okay, black. Yeah, that kind of looks nice. Then gray hair or white hair. Yep. Then we can look at the skill tree. Okay, so we can kind of see how it's going to be. It's similar to, to the way it was last time, I think, which was a, a major change from before. Okay, cool. And then we have our castle over here. We can have a maximum of three, it looks like. Right, um, so let's end. Oh, we don't have to end our turn because we can keep going. So we're going to head over, want to head over towards that fight and do that. Yeah, and then maybe we'll come back and do that. Right, let's end our turn. Okay, so we can't quite see. Oh, here we go. All right, so there are two and a half school. This is two and a half school, that's two school, right. So I want to go and fight these guys. Hmm. Oh, I can't go by. Is that right? Yeah, it doesn't seem to let me by there without doing that fight. I don't like that. Right, so... I guess I'm going to come down and do this one then. Or, actually, that one is better. For the training. So let's go do this one. The battle. So I guess we have to do that and then open up the rest of the map. Okay. One thing though I guess to consider is that the more time we spend here, the more likely it is that the the enemies will be able to get a party together that can fight their way through over the bridge or like where the wizard guy is. And then if they do that, um, it probably means it's gonna be pretty difficult for us to deal with that party. Right, so let's start with you. Hmm, I'm not sure that's going to hit him, is the problem. So I think if I move you here, that might be a better option. Hmm, yeah, I kind of want to keep those two. So you can hook. Can you hook him? Seven, okay, let's try that first. Okay, good. Then you move here. I want to kick this. There we go. I was hoping for a double hit. Double hits are always great in this game. Now she can move to here, and she can use her whirlwind. And that against him. Okay, great. 
and then we're just going to end our turn. So then they're just going to move into place. Okay, and it's um, up to us really to try and sort them out. Right, so let's turn. Around. So we can't hit both of these guys because the stump is in the way. But it's more important to control this guy. So you're going to move there and kick. It looks like they're going to go into him, but I think he's actually going to hit this and then go that way. But we'll see. Oh, they did hit them. Okay, great. So he's dead. Yeah, it's, it's one thing um, with it like that, that. I don't know whether it changed or not or whether um, it's always been like that. But, you know, some sometimes when you kick something, I guess it depends. If the top had been there, you might have hit that. And then with just stump there, maybe there's enough room for him to move through. And that would be like, um, I would say really good design by the guys if they've done that. Right, so she needs to move over here. And then what we want to do really is try to I think you need to move as well. So you're going to move to here. And what we're going to do is we're going to overwatch and try to take out one of those two. Okay, yeah, he's gone. And he dropped the potion for us. And this guy. Okay, he managed to hit us. Right, so now, the way that other one worked means that if he goes here, he should be able to do exactly the same thing we did on the other side. He's tired. Oh, that's something new. What does tired do? It doesn't tell me. Maybe his sprinter thing is affected by it, I'm not sure. I like this though, the way they've added in these tool tips as well. That's nice. But I'd like I'd like it to explain to me what tired actually does mechanically. But let's uh kick you. There we go, so we stunned one. Now we can just start picking them out, really. Picking them off. Let's shoot you. Okay, good, he's dead. And then... 67, so you can move and shoot him. That's what I want you to do. Move over here. Should get a better chance in 67. Yeah, 100. And then he's gone. And there we go. Okay. Pretty straightforward first encounter. Happy enough with the, the way it played out. Especially seeing it's been a while since I played the game as well. I always get worried with this game because when I started out originally, I wasn't very good at the game. Uh, but I've improved over time. And, and that's something I really like about the game is that um, it's like, it, it's really like just by playing, um, you know, you can get a lot better. Whereas like a lot of games nowadays aren't like that. Like there are games where you can keep playing and then you only, you'll only reach a certain level and then you kind of have to start watching guides and things to, to, to get any better than that. But I feel like, um, this game kind of does, does well, by kind of teaching you by just letting you play the game. So we've got a um, thing here. You find a goblin training dummy. It might be the militia's old one or a punching bag for an overly energetic peasant. You may invest some steps. Yeah, let's get, uh, let's get 20 XP. Why not? Okay, then I want to check out. Oh, so Evan has leveled up, which is cool. So we get a new ability or we could 
well, we can't move on to those, so we need to pick a new ability. Right, so we've got knockback, pacify, cancels um, reactions of a single target, cannot miss. Uh, that I could see that being a lifesaver. Um, curse arrow fires an arrow that curses a single target for two turns, having its offensive stat. That could be very good against um, if you're dealing with like trolls or the large spiders, where you need to you you have like maybe it's a la the last turn, like or your last person on a turn. And you need to do something to stop them from maybe killing when you're frontline guys. You can see that being very important. But in terms of control, knockback really is great. So we're going to grab that. Okay, and then we go back uh, or go back to the party. There we go. Okay, so we're going to give the long sword to you. And then we'll give that to you. Okay, enough with that. I'm liking the way you have your stats displayed over here, though. It's nice. It kind of it, it makes it a lot easier to to see how your guys are improving and stuff like that, and to compare one to the other. Want to notice? Well, oh no, that's his his XP. I was gonna say, yeah, there's HPs over here. I was say maybe because he took some damage, but it's not. It's just. It happens to be two away from that. Um, okay, so he's going to level up the next time we fight. So here, three and a half skulls. Probably going to have to leave that for a while. You're one. Yeah, we should go over there and do that. Let's end the turn. Okay, we haven't really looked at a castle yet because, because I don't think we have the gold for it yet. So we, we're going to have to build up our gold. And then probably in the next episode, we're going to have a look at the castles. So we're going to battle here. So we have a troll in here. So guys with stun protection, he's got stun protection as well. So stun protection, if you haven't played the game before, means that you've got to hit, uh, you, you hit or cause him to hit something once. And then that removes the stun protection, and then you've got to do it again, and then they'll be stunned. So this guy, if I hit this and hit him with it, this would disappear, but he wouldn't be stunned. He'd be able to act. If if I um, hit him with something, so hit him with this, and then there was something behind him, so maybe over here that he then subsequently uh, moved, like slid and bumped into, the second hit would then cause him to be stunned. So for him, I'm trying to look at, like we could hit him with a tree. If we could move far enough, we could hit him with a spider. I don't think, maybe we can though. Um, no. Oh, we can, we can hit him with this spider here. Okay. So that's an option. I think I might do that actually. Right, so let's start then by moving you here. Because in terms of what we're facing here, this guy is the is the um, danger. The little spiders can, if they gang up, especially if they gang up in the back line, like if they, if they gang up on her, they can definitely take her out. But this, this guy can um, take someone out in one round. Like it'd be kind of... Uh, well, let's let's do our kick first, and then we can we can worry about looking at the stats. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, his stun was blocked. You can see that the spider got stunned because it didn't have stun protection. But now we should be able to hit him with this, or we could like we could maybe drag the tree down on top of him as well. Um, let's see what we got here, though. We're gonna go for new ability. So we got blinding light. Um, prod pushes a unit one tile away. It costs an action. That could be good if the unit is beside something that would stun them. Blinding Light though um, has been a bit of a staple for me with the Paladin, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that. I want to play around Prod at some stage though. 
Right now. We need you to move to here. And we can either pull. So we're going to pull that. Yeah, it's going to pull it on top of him. So we're going to hit him with a tree. Okay. So now he's stunned. And now we can um, deal with... One of these is obviously going to attack him. It's going to attack Solaris. But we may as well stun the other one. And this might actually kill it. Not quite. But yeah, it's, it's not looking good. Okay, and then we can end our turn. This will do some damage there. It paralyzed, so it means he, he can't move this turn. So therefore, it, it becomes very important um, that we make good use of, of our other guys. So you have 14 health, which means that we can't kill you this turn. This combination does make things a little difficult for us, especially where he is. If he was there, we could use him to kick this and then maybe stun him again. But I think, um, yeah, I think I know what to do. If you move there and turn around, if you use this, um, no, actually it's not gonna work. I was thinking, Hit him with the tree and then he'd be, but the tree doesn't knock back. So I think maybe I made a bit of a mistake there. Yeah, I did. If I had to put him over here, maybe, could it hit that and hit him with it? But I didn't do that, so. Um, but we're gonna use this anyway to see what happens. Yeah, so it doesn't stun him. I did take off seven health though. So then, he now has blinding light, which we have to use against him. Okay, so, and we critter with it, which is nice. So now he's five health left. So she's going to do four to five damage to him. Let's move her here. And then let's, let's hope for the five damage. Okay, six, six is even better. Right, that's, he's dealt with now. Not as well, I could definitely could have de dealt with him better. Um, fire blast, I don't really use it all that much. Um, cursed arrow. And empower, plus 200 physical for two turns. Let's, um, let's grab that. Okay, then that's the end of our turn. He's gonna take some damage from these guys, but they're paralyzed. Okay. There's some damage there though. And that should be damage as well, yep. Okay. So now he can't move again. So we've got to work out what's the best thing to do so I think we can just kill them probably she's gonna move to here so she can kill this one okay it dies then Evan Let's move Evan here so we can kill the one right in front of him. Yeah, let's kill this one. Okay, good. And then we just finish you off. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Nice little visual there. Okay. Yeah, so made a few little errors there but we we're able to kind of recover the situation we we're never really in any big trouble
But if we had allowed the troll to to actually take its turn, then maybe we would have been in trouble. Okay, now we can go and grab some big coins or some XP. Um, right now, actually, it's difficult. Like the big coins would be nice. The XP you can always earn. I think Bitcoin's at the start. And then next time then we can ha have a look at the at our fort because we're gonna have enough Bitcoins to actually start doing stuff there now. Um, let's go and see the very dead corpse. You come across a corpse, so at a quick glance you see that the adventurer's code was not followed through. No one has yet to go over the deceit's loop. Okay, so we have a fire shard and that. And then we could get some more bitcoins there. That is a very difficult one, which we're probably not going to do. We're going to grab the coins and then we'll have a look at that um, at a fort. But for now, we're going to um, leave that there. I'm going to be playing more of this and you're going to see it kind of popping up over the next week or so. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see to, to see more of the improvements that the guys have made. First impressions of this new build is definitely an improvement on the old one. I'm um, really liking some of the stuff that, that they've done. And it really does like feel like a, a so far at least, a, a complete game, which is great. Um, so I want to wish, like I've kind of had contact with some of the guys um through the time like that that they've done this and um i think now like the maybe um like now and again i still hear from the guys but um thankfully they they kind of got bigger um bigger fish to fry in terms of like the uh twitch streamers and youtubers who are looking at the game as well so i'm very happy for them um in that regard but i do wish them every success with the game and i also hope that um they and their loved ones are safe during this kind of um, whole COVID-19 situation. I hope that the same is true for you, that um, those that you love and you yourself are keeping safe and you know, you're know you not having too many troubles with things. And I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button there on the right or checking out some other videos here on the left. Or perhaps you might even share with some friends.